Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome. I have a special, special, special person to introduce all of you to. You know, one of the things I love is that I really don't know what I don't know, even today. You know, even with, it doesn't matter how many years you go to school, it really doesn't even matter, you know, what you did yesterday. But the idea that you can become an open vessel and pretty much take in what's happening around you to be able to ignite a spark within yourself even if it means helping you get out of bed each day. This is really the beauty of of what I'm going to talk about today and who I'm going to introduce you to. Because if you focus on your journey and you focus on your journey with your whole being, something happens. And today, divine guidance and the divine guidance experience and what we're talking about today in Solutions for the Whole Being with Patricia McNair is about that. It's about putting aside the judgment you may not have about, I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. I don't know what to do. What is she talking about again? Is she asking me to be something I'm not? No, we would never ask you to do that. But what if we were asking you to be your whole being. What if we could share some things with you today that may inspire you to just move a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit? What if that was the case? Today, I'm really honored and thrilled for you all to meet my friend and colleague, someone, someone that will introduce herself to you. She's known as many things, Good Sunshine Woman, Starlight Unity Woman, Free Child, born in Canada, and somebody that has seen many, many, many things. And you'll hear about that today. But what is it when you're tapped and you're asked to create something called divine guidance? What happens when you're asked to share that with people? What happens when you connect with people one-on-one and in a show like this and what she will be doing, where she'll invite all of you to step in to the light that you are, to ask your questions, to get divine guidance, to understand that we are all connected in oneness. And when you think about this and you think about the words divine guidance, I guarantee you you'll be inspired to think of those times where things seemed impossible, unrealistic, never going to happen. And then the opportunity, the portal, and the possibilities opens. Today, we want to take you on this journey. The journey has to do with what does it mean to focus on your journey? That's what today's about. When you focus on that, what you want, when you put your attention on that which you want, magic happens. When you focus on things you don't want, magic happens in the way you don't want it to happen. So everybody get ready to meet one of the most incredible guidance, and as I wanna say, guidance individuals, solution persons, healer, coach, consultant, whatever, you, whatever language you use, Patricia McNair is that person that can help us take that next step. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you. It's great to be doing this. Yay, finally, right? Yes. Hi, Dr. Pat. Good to be here. Absolutely exciting journey to get here. And it's it's really showed me it's going to be an amazing journey after we are here. So thank you for having me. I've often thought about what happens when 
you know, we do shows like this and we look at things like cards and do readings and tap into energies, as I like to say, that's what I call it. I don't know what the real language is, but you know, for me, there is an energy of things. There's an energy that I've learned about in my life. I want to ask you this question and, and I ask everybody this, um, here we are, a lot of preparation went into this, not just for the show, but in you being you, what challenges, what obstacles did you have to overcome, my friend, to get us to this very moment? Well, I'm, I'm honest to the point. I'm blunt, and the listeners are going to learn that. Um, there's no uh, fluff with me. I get down to stuff. I'm no different than anyone else. I had to get myself out of the way. Um, I had to accept who I was. I had to uh, understand this being um, in order to understand others. And I looked like everyone else outside at everything and everybody and and um, accepting my being. Uh, we all have things that are really difficult that, you know, everybody can find something wrong with somebody if you choose to. And I choose to see what's right and light. I, I choose to see what's there um, beyond the defenses, beyond the shells, beyond the traditional training. So, um, and with that, um, I see in a different way. And uh, your question before, um, you know, when you tap into things, it's energy. Well, we are energy. So what we're actually doing, we're not tapping into the cards or the stones or the crystals. We're tapping into our energy and connecting in a different way to that object. So, you know, let's talk about this because I, what, 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 what we're going to have a little situation. Sounds good. It's a situation we're going to have is what happens when you two put two blunt people on a positive talk radio network together? Uh, it's fun. called truth. Uh, <laughs> Great. I love it. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, so I, I often would blame my four planets in Sagittarius for some of the things I've said, but I'm not so sure that's it either. Um, I want to talk about divine guidance. Now, true confessions is this. I can't say that I am a person that came into this world like so many people have that have studied from day one about whole being. That's not my journey. That's not me. Mine either. Yours either. Mm -mm. Something happened to me in 1997. Now, a lot of folks, Patricia, a lot of people hear me talk about, oh, I dialed the wrong phone number. And no. I started to get worked on a long time before that. And I met a woman, and I'm going to mention her, and then I want to ask you this question. I met a woman who's no longer with us, was my mentor, Sedonia Cahill. And I met her for the wrong reasons, which turned out to be so right. I met her because my boss wanted me to go out on her 10-day vision quest process in the desert and steal all of her ideas. Now, we know what spirit don't do that. Mm -mm. That's not the reason. Mm -mm. What is it about the divine guidance experience that can make life so easy? Well, um, it's your perception of easy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because uh, most things that uh, the best and most uplifting, unveiling, taken away from guck from my own being has been when I didn't want to do something. When the self-will overrode and this, the ego was scared to take that action. And, and it's like you're resisting the whole world to do what spirit is asking you to do. So easy, not at that second, but 10 <laughs> seconds when you let go of that um, because you have trust in your being. And you have trust in who your um, guides, connection, what you're connected with. Um, when you have trust and faith in that and in your own being, you know that you're going to mess up sometimes, 
right? You just know that. You just let that go and you say, okay, yep. Um, but the hardest times that I've, I, I've had to say yes to spirit has been times when I've just looked up and said, creator, I really don't get this. And I'm a little bit mad right now. And I just talk to them the way I would talk to you or anyone else. I don't get this creator, but I'm here. Let's do it. Let's talk about that. <laughs> For many people, they're meeting you for the first time. I've gotten to spend time with you almost several times a day, several times a week, and, you know, have watched this part of your journey. People ask me, look, who are you really? You know, we've heard you, Pat, talk about this part of your life and this part of your life and this part of your life. But how do you describe yourself? And, and let's start with that about the becoming you know i could ask you who you are but i want to ask you about the becoming you know what was this journey like the becoming to bring you here today the who is trish mcnair becoming journey well, honestly it started before i came here in this form um and I have a lot of conscious memory of other and uh, people call them lifetimes. I call them experiences. Um, and I don't know if they were lifetimes, all of them. I just know that I have a connection to my soul, which is part of my whole being, which allows me to have connection to memory. Now, you don't have that memory all the time. You have that memory when it's needed and when you're able to tap in. So in many things that I've done in my life, and I've been standing in different places and sharing uh, what I am receiving spiritually from the land or from the traditional elders or just from a self-help group. Um, you get the memory of that experience. You get the knowledge of where you were trained in order to do that experience at that time. So what I invite people to know is I woke up, I was awake when I was born. Um, adults couldn't handle me as a child because I knew when they were lying. Um, I knew when uh, my biological mom came to me at three and said, you and your brother are going for an ice cream. And I looked at her and said, no, mommy, you put my car, you put my clothes in the trunk in a paper bag. I saw you. So it, it, that is not really handled well. And so for a lot of time, I've never really tried to shut off who I am. The main thing I've tried to shut off, Dr. Pat, is my spark. Oh. Because when you are truly fully alive, whether you don't want to be or not, or you do, there are times in your life when you want to shut that spark off because you know you're going to pick yourself up and you're going to move ahead. And sometimes you feel very tired and you don't want to know. And you don't want to move that foot ahead of the other. And you don't want to have compassion for that person that has abused or harmed you. I mean, we're, we're in a human form. We have that to work with. But I don't allow the human form to stop my whole being. And so that's why I wanted to do this show is to allow people to know that there's other tools that we have to connect with on a whole being level that can help us through stuff. A lot of people dictate, you know, the psychiatry, the emotional, they're really good tools. But if there's something ailing you in the physical, there's something that you need to attend to on the spirit and the soul. We're, it's all connected. We don't know that all the time, some of us, and some of us do. So you look for that pain in the knee. How is that connected? What am I not doing? Am I not walking my spiritual path? Am I not the, the throat? Am I not speaking what I need? I mean, it's pretty logical, um, but it gets missed a lot because there's been so many eons of separation of spirit and form. And I'm here to say, let's bring that, turn it around. And let's bring it on. Let's do it. Let's bring it on. Let's you know, it, 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 let's bring it on. And you yeah. know, this is why I'm excited about the show you're going to do and what you're going to bring to the world. Because with you know, let's talk about this for a minute. You, you know, one of the things that I'm struck by about myself is that you know I do a lot of things. I mean, I could pick myself up. I do a lot of things from a place of perseverance. I learned that from my stepmom. But 
the real expansive things in my life, I really look towards assistance and help. Now, it doesn't mean that I, I, I don't know how to get from here to there, but I don't see myself in the way that I need to see myself sometimes. Right now, people are not seeing themselves in their possibility and potential. And that's why for me, this is one of the most motivating and exciting, you know, bodies of work that we can do is to help folks, you know, see. And I, and I was thinking about this, you know, and talking with you is, is this, you have always been able to see at a soul level. And sometimes folks can't do that. And so they think, that they don't have one, or they think that the guidance and the creator is not there for them, or they think it's never going to change, or it's, you know, it's not going to shift. And let's talk about what we can do, what the body of work is, what you provide to people to help them step into that place. Because there's another thing I want to get back to, you know, to today, and that is a lot of folks don't have time for fluff. Did you, I think you said fluff. Um, you know, some people don't like marshmallows in their hot chocolate. Mm -mm. They just want to get to the hot chocolate. Um, let's talk about what you've been able to do to help people and how you work to help people stand in the full nature of who they are. Well, um, be myself authenticity is a must. Um, when I say I don't play with fluff, I get down to stuff with myself. <laughs> well, I hold the other person that I'm working with accountable to do that too. So a lot of my mentoring experiences that I, I create is I'll give a 40 minute free consultation. Uh, and I'll allow that person, I'll listen to that person on every level, the soul, the spirit, the mental, the emotional, the physical, what's happening. And Many times I'll be able to put forward to them what they're really looking for, that they didn't even, they weren't even aware that they were looking for that. And that's how you do it. You, you got to get into where the person is needing, not just wanting. And I don't um, force anybody to do anything, but I won't play around with anybody's emotions or thoughts, or I won't fake it with them. I'm very honest and I'm very upfront and some clients choose not to work with me because they're not quite ready. Um, and because they don't, it's sometimes it's words and language. They don't understand where I'm coming from and what I'm saying. And a couple of days later, I'll get an email and say, well, you know, my, my, my uncle Jack called and he said the, almost the same word you said, <laughs> and that's been going on for 20 years and I wasn't aware of it. When can we start our work? So I don't do anything for anybody else, but guide them, consult them and stand beside them. If they want to cry, if they want to be angry, if they want to address people that they can not address, because many of us have people in our lives that have really harmed our being and that is staying on the cellular level and the spirit is continuously trying to get that cleared from the physical so that the spirit can come through you know it's hard to fill a cup that's already full so let's get let's get the cup a little cleared and then allow spirit in and then they know that they have this extra assistance that is theirs and everyone being guided by outside and by others that's great because Messages are everywhere. It's in the trees, in the leaves, in the sky, but messages are in here. And the comfort blanket that of spirit that everybody is looking for is there. So I go a little bit deeper with people that I work with and I don't play guru. Mm. Uh, it's not my work, but however, anytime you're working with somebody else, there's something here as well to look at may not even be the same thing but that's going to trigger something that i need to become aware of whether it's that i've achieved it or that hey i missed that one doesn't matter what it is because it always has to be full circle sharing in my mind's eye it has to be full circle sharing it has to be about respect you have to have basic respect mm. for everybody you may not like what they do 
<laughs> but you have to have basic respect. They're here and what they're here for. That's, that's important. It's just as you important know, as me. I, I, I love this idea of full circle. And you, we're going to talk about this when we come back from break, because <laughs> we're also going to talk about, you know, how did, how did you come about by divine guidance? You know, so one of the lessons I learned out in the desert, my first trip out in the desert with Sedonia and creating my first circle, right? Hmm. When you create that circle, med medicine wheel, whatever people want to call it, when you create that space that you are going to sit in for the next 24 hours, it's fascinating what gets attracted in it. You know, so once I shut the gate of the East and stepped in there, it was clear as, as I was instructed, you want your in, you're in. It's a little bit too late to look at the driftwood you have in there and realize, oh my gosh, there is an entire family of lizards that live there. Mm -hmm. Or, oh my gosh, uh, you're actually on the side of a rock and there are rattlesnakes that live there. Mm -hmm. But what is it that we learn from this idea of oneness, from this idea of coming together? What do we learn through divine guidance, even when the snakes are at your toes and the lizards do not want you to sit on their driftwood? <laughs> what do you learn by divine guidance? And ultimately, the mountain lion that just came to visit you doesn't look at you as food, looks at you in awe. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about divine guidance. What is it about it? that is so available to us and so few use. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with the most amazing Patricia McNair. Stay tuned, everybody, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, welcome back. Uh, look, you're gonna hear a lot more I want to talk to you today about the divine guidance experience and, you know, what does the act of whole being mean? Patricia McNair is my very special guest today. I want to make sure you all know how to find out about her, about the work she does. Would you tell folks the best way to find out about you? It's through your website, isn't it? Yeah. Divineguidance.earth. Um, of email? course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Divineguidance.earth. Um. <laughs> Uh, you know, look, you're going to be doing a number of shows, and we're going to talk about that later. But when I first heard the words divine guidance, I wish that I, my eyes lit up and I was like, everybody else in the, in the course I was taking, they're like, ah. and I'm like, what? What is that? Some of us get the lessons in the easy way, and some of us have to walk a path until we actually get the lessons by a two by four. But divine guidance came to you. What was that like? What was it like? Scary. I was scary. Um, you mean the word, um, why I called- It's an I energy. Divine guidance. Yeah, yeah, even if you have the words, chances are there was an energy that showed up. I mean, you don't get words like divine guidance without like puff, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and following divine guidance is, is like I said, the, the biggest step is, you know, you're going to do it. You know, you're going to, like, I know that I'm going to do um, what I'm guided to do. And the whole thing is I trust spirit but I'm at a point in my life and in my journey where spirit now trusts me. And that's the aspect we need to look at when we're looking at whole being. Uh, it's not about learning to trust who we are and how to do our magic or whatever label you want to put on it. It's knowing that you can trust the energies, the consciousness that you're growing um, and connecting to. And then you come to a point where you know they trust you because Patricia's going to do it. There's no doubt that Patricia's going to do it. She may kick and scream. You know, she may sing the whole way through. Um, divine guidance is about being led by my whole being, not just my mental, emotional, or physical um, for me. And divine guidance is a saving grace for me because I know that I have a soul 
that knows way more than I do in this form on what I'm here for. And yeah, I got yeah. I, I to ask a question. I want to ask you this question. Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask a question and I get this question a lot. Um, it's, it's almost a little sarcastic question. Um, and I don't think it's meant to be, but it was one of the questions I was asked is like, seriously, you went to school for 10 years and did all this and positioned yourself for a great consulting job. So what, you can buy airtime? And, and I thought, and you know, I don't answer that question exactly the way it's asked. But if you understand divine guidance, you know that it isn't about those two outcomes. It's about the journey. What's the journey been like for you? I think we discussed this when we were talking one day when you were helping me with stuff to prepare for the show. Um, and I simply asked you why you felt that hadn't been part of your journey. Uh, for me, I wa I've taught computers. Um, I've cleaned toilets. I've, you know, um, and yeah. <laughs> you do what you have to do, but, but you take from it. You know, one thing that I feel in my heart is if you're going to do something, try to enjoy it. Find something in it that you can enjoy that ignites that energy in you. Um, and then take what from it something for the rest of your life, right? Because it's valuable. Everything you do is valuable. So I took life skills uh, out of the University of Regina years ago. Um, and it was to help me when I was teaching entrepreneurship and uh, how to uh, not take on the responsibility of my students that I'm there to provide the information, facilitate the information, do it the best of my ability. Um, but I'm not responsible for their fail or pass. Well, that has followed me through with my spiritual sharing and my public speaking. It's given me the confidence to know. And the four myths came out of that where um, I can make you happy. I can make you sad. You can make me happy. You can make me sad. That's a load of crock. You know, it comes down to choice and the choice is yours, not mine. So whatever we're doing together, you always have your choice. It shouldn't bother me what choices you make unless it's demeaning to me. And as kind as I am, I will stand up for my being. Oh, boy. And that is the message for a time right now. That really is a message for a time. Um, you know, I, I was looking at you know, each of us, right? We get to be in the world. And we get to be in the world by, as you say, focusing on the whole person. And I was thinking about all the different ways that you have created to help people be in the energy and the space of that whether it's mentoring, whether it's practitioner experience, whether it's business, helping people focus on business, mm -hmm. whether it's spirit-led workshops, whether it's simply engaging with people, being out there, helping others come together in the world. What excites you most right now? What is it when you take a look a little bit ahead, right? Right, we don't wanna go, too crazy ahead, right? But when you kind of look at this and you look at this show and this now new stepping in to another realm, I think of whole being, right? What is it that energizes you? Sharing the experience. Sharing the experience. Uh, the people that I've lined up for guests um, are people that are very authentic, uh, very real. Um, and they don't have the platform. So I see me as being a mini Dr. Pat in a way, because you took this journey and you did what you needed to do to create this network for people like myself to have this opportunity. So um, I'm not going to do anything unless I can share it with something or someone uh, with it. it. That energy has to circulate and spread. It has to be full circle. So I have some awesome, wonderful guests uh, lined up. We're gonna have everything from gongs to, we're gonna have physical. I've got a lady that um, paints, she's a beautiful artist and she turns her paintwork into clothes. 
and sells them around the world. Um, I've got people who are doing so unique, beautiful things and they're not gurus. You won't find a guru yeah. and there's nothing wrong with gurus. Let me just say that gurus are very important for people who are unsecure that need to go to somebody who is at that level, stays at that level, is comfortable at that level because they need to have people go there long enough until they go, Hey, I know as much as they do. So that brings that being into a higher consciousness of themselves. Everybody is important. How they do it is important. I'm excited right now in the last week about businesses. Yes. And I'm wondering where I'm going to go because I've been in business and corporate like yourself. Um, and I've been in many different areas of it. I've always worked with the small business, getting people going, stirred up, excited, uh, risk takers. Um, and I'm excited about businesses doing it and a more conducting business in a more humane way. And a, in a more valid way, I'm also going to have uh, people on my show, which are, are time bankers. And I love that concept. It's not the concept of um, uh, bartering because when you do something and you barter, you're expecting something back. Right. Uh, but with my brief little understanding of time banking is you do something and you bank your time. So if you're a lawyer, it's worth an hour. If you're a street cleaner, it's worth an hour. And everybody's equal in that way. And I love that. Concept. I love that idea. I love that idea. You know, it, there's an energy to that. You know, th there is an energy to what you're saying. And you're absolutely right. There's something that we need to do to help businesses. You know, one of the things that, that hit me the other day was there's a renewal. Renewal. You, you know what I mean? Everybody says startup. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. We need a sense of renewal, right? Something that reminds us of who we are on the inside, who we are, you know, who the creator has said, this is it, this is your path. And we may have gone through a little bit of a dormant period. So renewal is a word that I'm looking at right now. But one of the things that I'm struck by is I got to work with you on the opener for your show and the music to that. <clears throat> and that experience for me, and we worked together on it. And what I was struck by, and this really talks to your work for me, most folks would just be, ah, let's put the music, but there are nuances of energy. And when people listen to the show opener and they listen to the music, there were so many beautiful, divinely guided elements that went in there. Everything from maybe the chant that you may not hear clearly, but it is in there, the opening words, the music. It's a symphony of energy. So when I think of you, that's what I think about. I think about how you help people create that symphony, that harmony of energy. And that's what I love about this. And I was really struck by it because I remember working with those sounds. I'm just gonna say working with those sounds for a minute. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me and most mixers or producers, people don't know that I actually do mix. Mm -hmm. They would have cut things out, right? But I couldn't, I had to somehow get something from each of those contributors, something of the whole. How can we help people today create that level of harmony through divine guidance? Because there's no way that I was going to be allowed to cut this out or not play even the smallest of two seconds of this or make sure I had the sticks in there or pick the right, there was no way that wasn't, and have it to be balanced in how they came together. This couldn't be too high. And then there's your voice, must hear your voice. Tell us about the harmony and how the show will help people create that, 
even if we have to face the dissonance of sounds. Well, we're all made up of sound and light. And uh, when I'm sharing, I know that everyone has a belly button and a bum. And I can see which one they're willing to share. <laughs> <laughs> right? And myself, when I get up in the morning, that's my choice as well. Um, I have a lot of discipline. Um, life and, and, and love and laughter and being alive has brought a lot of discipline to this being. Now, do I get upset once in a while? Oh, heck yeah, I can. I can raise the roof. I try not to. Uh, and I have a lot of a presence that I've had to walk around with and, and kind of tone the presence down. And this is not from ego. This has been a problem. My presence is felt when I, when I, I'm going anywhere. And so for me, that was a fear of how can I balance that all that I am and all that I'm remembering that I am and stand up and not be afraid to be all that I am. And how can I carry that to the grocery store? How can I carry that in a relationship that's not quite used to that? Um, do it. <laughs> mm -hmm do it so as other people <coughs> i invite them to know that every single part is a part that can be a symphony is a part that can flow is a part my 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 saddest part in working with people is that they've been told to give it away release it let it go it's it's, it's and my part is you know recognize what no longer serves you but value what has served you to this point to that knowing yeah it's a full circle yeah so and quite you know shut the mind down so that you can hear your spirit well why do i want to shut my mind down my heart's going to stop i'm going to die <laughs> like I, I, I want my mind working with my spiritual mind in unity Right? I want the best of it all. I want to take a piece of this and a piece of this. And I want to know how it works together. And I want the excitement to overflow so that other people are willing to do that as well. Don't be afraid. You know, you can only mess up and fix up. As long as you don't throw up. I always told my kids, you can mess up. And you can start talking about it. And you can be upset about it. But don't throw up. Watch it. There's a line. So do that with yourself. Be patient. Have some care for yourself. Like genuine care. Not just, oh, I look lovely today. Or, <laughs> um, let's have some real care for ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about that because, you know, we are talking about, you know, what does it mean to focus on the whole being with Patricia McNair, everybody. And, you know, she's got a fabulous show coming up here you're going to hear about. And for those of you out there that would love to find out more about her, work with her, it's really easy. It's divineguidance.earth. We're going to take a really short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what is the energy and the possibility of what we step into when we really do focus on our whole being. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so thrilled to introduce all of you to Patricia McNair for a lot of reasons. And certainly if you go to Divine Guidance Earth, you're going to find out lots more about who she is and what she does. But most importantly, what I've learned over time is people show up for the season. People show up for the moment that they need to. People's gifts show up to each other in actually in the focus of the calling of divine guidance, whether it's you showing up for a friend today, picking up the phone or calling them or connecting with someone you haven't talked about, even if you have to leave a message or maybe taking a look and thinking, wow, who haven't I called lately? Have I been so absorbed in my own stuff? But sometimes when we take that walk, when we say yes to divine guidance, whole lot of things may start to change. So for all of you out there that really have been touched 
by the energy of divine guidance and may feel a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit daunting, as I felt in my life, you have somebody you can work with who understands what that means and how to focus on the whole being. You know, certainly if you look at what other people have said in working with um, my friend and colleague, Patricia McNair, you'll see, you'll see that people talk about words that have touched them, how they've been changed, you know, how just shedding a little bit of light can open up that portal and that little bit of light is immensely powerful in the contrast of dark. Um, and we're super excited about her upcoming show. Um, look, this is the first of many, right? People will get to know you quite a bit. You know, this is the beauty of coincidentally, my words, how <laughs> you are emerging in a time when the world needs this. They need this. And I say the word need really cautiously, but here it is. Parts of us, I believe, if you listen to folks, parts of us have forgotten we are whole beings, right? I mean, folks call it as healing. So some folks call it as action. But the notion of being a whole being requires focus and requires divine guidance. What are you called now to bring forward in the world, in your show, in the consults you do, the services? I'm excited about the fact that you're gonna be working with businesses. You have no idea what the need is for that. But there's an energy out there and we can transmute it, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm like everybody else, I need help. I mean, I could sit in my own space and just, oh, yeah, no. I've never achieved anything in my life without divine guidance. I just didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. What are we bringing? What, what I'm, I was guided about two and a half years ago to set up a mobile phone and go on this thing called Facebook Live. Right. So I sat there and I talked to myself for I don't know how long. And then people started showing up. And it was interesting that people were actually liking listening and they wanted to be on the show. So I did I do have and I still have a platform, um, Divine Guidance on Facebook. Uh I used to do lives. I set it up um following the seven principles of Native American. Each day was a different principle, Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, so I usually did magical Mondays and I did one's wisdom keeper Wednesdays and I was overbooked and I didn't know what to do with it and I didn't have any help. And then I was guided to, um, host a gathering here, my husband and I about, it was a year ago, September, I believe, uh, with the star teachings and spirit threw me into star teachings and I'm still in star teachings. I love the message. I love, uh, David Lone Bear Santa Pass. I love the messages from the Copper Scrolls. I love it. Um, and then I had such a hard time with this website for the last four years. And then I get an email from your body and I'm going, is this a joke? What's going on? Like, okay, let me feel this out. Somebody really wants to talk to me about having a show. Um, I'm meeting Bonnie, meeting you, Linda. I'm going to name call here. Kim, Olivia, everybody. Hope I didn't leave anyone out. Mm -hmm. um, it's you have helped so much by your own divine guidance and allowing me to be who I am to create this show the way spirit wants it. And I believe that I've never wanted to belong to organizations and groups unless I was allowed to let spirit lead or guide mm -hmm. to follow my divine guidance. If I can't live up to the name, I'm not going to do the show. Right. Simple. So that's what we're going to do here. And it's going to be what spirit wants it to be. It's going to be what your spirit wants of me and of yourself and I'm not going to heal or fix or promote, you know, turn on some magic key. You're going to do the work because in anything that I do, 
with anybody else assisting me. I'm doing 90% of the work myself. I'm taking the responsibility. I'm taking that right and responsibility to do my own work. And so anybody, anybody coming forward will be doing their own work, but they won't be doing it alone. I didn't have a Patricia to walk with. I didn't. And it's taken a lot to cultivate this. And I've had so many blessings that I couldn't have created this myself. I couldn't have written my story with the best writer or novelist in the world. I couldn't have sat down and put this fiction together. And neither could you. And if everyone else looks at their lives, neither could they. So it's time to stop reading about it. Let's start living it. Give it a chance. Drop the fear. You know, drop the fear of being who you are and enjoy and embrace and empower that doesn't have to be in a selfish way. Let's do it in a humbling, caring, loving, connected way. That's my message. Yeah. And that'll be my message every show. Yeah. <laughs> One way or another. What I love about this is to that this is a walk. This is a walk. And I shared with you a story from one of my mentors who, you know, when we got together and we were in circle and mentoring youth, and, you know, there would be a phrase, may you always walk in beauty. And she, for about a year or so, I don't know how long it was, it felt like an eternity, you know, may you always walk in beauty. And, you know, she would look at me and say, yeah, not you, not yet, something like that, right? And then laugh, just a little chuckle, right? And I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not all that I think I am in this process, in this place. Um, until the day when we chanted, may you always walk in beauty. And she just looked at me one day and said, may you always walk in beauty. Now, how do you pinpoint transformation? How do you pinpoint transmutation? How do you pinpoint it? Well, I don't think you do. I think it's the journey. I think it's the walk. I think it's what you do to help people authentically and purposefully. See, it's not a mistake that you talk about focus. Focus is an energy that is about action, but it's also about being. So lots to look forward to. You and I are gonna talk again. Also, you're gonna have guests on, you're gonna connect with the listeners because it's time. I'd love to know your personal message. I wanna thank you today for joining me. I'm excited about what you're creating. So much to transmute, starting with ourselves. What's your personal message? What do you wanna leave us with? There are no issues, only the oneness. Mm. There are no issues. You have it, you know it, you're kind to it, you grow it. There are no issues. Let's get together and talk. Let's walk together. Whatever time I'm supposed to walk beside you, I'll be there. I'll be there. And I won't leave until I'm supposed to. Mm. You can count on me being able to be there. If I'm supposed to be there, I'm going to be there whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you like it, we're going to have a lot more fun. Let's do it. <laughs> Patricia McNair, everyone, I want everybody to go over to divineguidance.earth. Lots of information about, you know, how you can connect with her, how you'll be able to work with her, how you'll be able to walk with her. Remember what we said way earlier in the show, right, Patricia? One of the things we said is, don't have to take this walk alone. No. We don't. No, you don't. And you don't have to run. And you don't have to, what you are going to do quickly, you're going to do it quickly. What you need to take more time on, you're going to need to make more time on. Stop comparing yourself to others because there is no others, it's you. And you're beautiful the way you are. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, you're talking to the person that took 13 years to get an undergraduate degree. So I totally get the message. <laughs> Patricia McNair, everybody, divineguidance.earth. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 